Hi, my name is Dr. Kristen Moon, and I wanted to share some details about the biology class that I'm offering for homeschool high schoolers through True North Homeschool Academy. First, let me share a few details about myself. I am actually a scientist by training. I have my undergraduate degree in microbiology, and I went on to earn a PhD in microbiology and molecular genetics. I got both of my degrees from the University of Florida. Um, the goal that I had in mind when I got my degrees was to pursue a, a career in lab science and do research. My specialty was virology. But when I had my first son, I recognized that my true heart's desire was to stay at home with my children, which I did. I had two boys, which are shown in this picture. And and when it came time to put them in school, I found that I was having so much fun learning with them that I wanted to continue the process. And I had learned about homeschooling. So we took on a homeschooling adventure and I homeschooled both of my sons all the way through from preschool through high school graduation. Um, and they are now both in college. They are both thriving in college, homeschooled the whole way. And they're both majoring in science degrees. As the time uh, was drawing to a close of my own homeschooling journey, I recognized that what I really wanted to do with the remainder of my time is to help other families equip their children with a fantastic science education from home. And so I started my own business, Kristen Moon Science. I started that in 2017. It started with me offering some live lab intensives to the homeschoolers in my local community. And then that expanded to a website where I offer self-paced classes. And um, this will be my third year teaching classes online through True, home, True North Homeschool Academy, and I absolutely love working for True North. I love the families that I serve. I love the students that I teach. Um, I've had some students join me my very first semester and have continued to take my classes. Um, and I have absolutely loved lear learning with my students and teaching them. So let me give you um, a behind the scenes peek into what my biology class looks like. So um, we meet once a week for a live online class. So the students see me, I see my students, we can see and talk to one another. Um, it is a, an interactive class and we have a lot of fun. Um, then after our live class, students log on to their learning platform and they have weekly assignments, which may or may not include labs for a given week, it may include projects, um, but they complete and turn in their homework on our learning platform and I grade it and give feedback. Um, there's no textbooks to buy in any of my classes because I've been teaching for over 20 years and I know the topics and the scope that needs to be taught in each one of my classes and I have my own resources that I provide my students. So no textbook is necessary. Um, but for doing hands-on labs and activities, there will be some supplies that students need to purchase the majority of these supplies they can get at their local grocery store. I really am very sensitive to, um, to not making anything for my class cost a lot of money. In my biology class, I also offer an optional honors track, which I recommend for your gifted students or for your students who plan to go on to college, especially if they want to major in a science. Um, I plan this honors track with those students in mind. They have to complete the same assignments that all of the students in my class have to complete. But in addition, my honor students may have additional um, assignments to complete, additional labs to perform, some projects or reports to conduct. Basically, I want to get them thinking and analyzing graphs and, and interpreting data and preparing them for their college experience. So let me walk you through the topics that we'll be studying, and I've tried to include pictures and ideas of the types of labs or projects that um, I might require of your students if they take this class. So we start the year by just talking about science in general. What is it? Um, we talk about the scientific method. We talk about what makes a good scientific experiment. I tried to teach them how to tell the difference between good science and bad science. 
um, they get to practice the scientific method the very first week with a fun demo that I assigned them. They learn about dependent and independent variables, and they learn the difference between correlation and causation. From there, we start talking about biology, and biology is the study of life. So that begs the question, what is life? What characterizes something as a living thing? So that's one of the very first things that we talk about in my class. Um, here, I've, I've made a note, my honors students, when we get to this part, one of their very first projects is I give them a series of articles to read and about viruses. Um, basically, there are two main schools of thought. Some people think that viruses are not considered living things. And a smaller group of people think that they should be categorized as living things. So I give the students, the honors students, some material to read. And then I want them to decide wh where do you weigh in on this? Given what you know about how scientists classify life, do you think a virus is a living thing or do you not? And there's no right or wrong answer. I just want to get them in the habit of thinking for themselves, coming up with an argument um, and presenting it to me. Um, okay, actually, <laughs> this does not belong here. I'm just now seeing this. I made a mistake. Okay. Uh, so the characteristics of life is what they, they talk about. And that's what we learn about in this section. Okay, then we move on to a little bit of chemistry. Um, I teach a whole nother course all, all about chemistry for True North um, Homeschool Academy, but we have to know a little bit about chemistry just in order to study biology. So we do spend a little bit of time talking about what an element is, um, the structure of an atom, why certain elements would bond together to form a molecule, the types of elements that are most found in living organisms. Then we talk about the major types of molecules in all living things, which are carbohydrates, lipids, nucleotides, including DNA or nucleic acids, including DNA and RNA and proteins. We also spend some time talking about P pH, acids and bases. We talk about enzymes. Um, and then one of the optional assignments that any students can uh, can, can do in this unit would be to measure what types of these molecules are found in food. And so once again, this is not a required um, lab, but all throughout the course, I give plenty of opportunities for those students who just really want lots of hands-on um, activities. Then we move into a very long unit on the cell because I feel like even if students have some background knowledge about cells from middle school, this is gonna be the first time that they really learn about the cell um, in great detail. So I don't wanna neglect this, um, this part of their science course. So we talk about cell structure. One of my students' favorite things that we do is I assign them a cell model project. So they learn all about how a cell is organized. They learn about the organelles, the different types of organelles and the organelles functions. And then I say, show me what a cell looks like. And they have free reign to do this however they like. So I'm showing you two of the many different types of models that I've gotten in my years of teaching biology. These are from last year's True North biology students. So lots of my students went ahead and constructed a three or a, a yeah, a three dimensional um cell model with either food, I had pizza cells, I had cookie cells, I had jello cells, I had all kinds of edible cells, but then I also had some people make models that can last forever, including this one, which was made in clay, which I think is absolutely remarkable. But not only do they have to make the model, they have to be able to label the different organelles. And in doing so, they really start to understand about cell structure. That's an abstract concept for most students, but by making this model, it really helps bring that to life. And then last year was the first time that I ever had students use a computer to make a model of a cell. So I had some students make cells in Minecraft, which was pretty awesome. And then several of my students used um, online animations to, to describe their cells to me. So I give my students lots of opportunities to um, let their creative abilities shine through. So then we also talk about how things get into and out of cells. We talk about the cell energy. We talk about photosynthesis and cellular respiration and how those two things are linked. 
Here are some other examples of projects from last year. This was one of my students using naked egg to model how things get into and out of cells. And this is another uh, student uh, picture when they they used um, chromatography to separate the pigments within green leaves. So this is related to photosynthesis. And then this is an example of one of the projects for my honor students. This is just using a potato and iodine. So nothing complicated, nothing that you have to go out of your way to buy. But this was one of my honors assignments. Basically, students did this lab to determine why cells are so small. Why don't we have big cells? So this is what this lab is um, demonstrating. So after we talk about cells, we talk about DNA, because once again, even if a student has some background knowledge about DNA, this is the first time they're getting into it to the nitty gritty detail. So most students have heard of DNA, but I want them to understand what DNA is. Why is it so miraculous? It really is. Um, how is it organized into genes? Um, how are genes expressed? We talk about transcription and we talk about translation. We talk about DNA replication and what happens when a mistake is made when DNA is copied. We would call that a DNA mutation. And what's the effect of DNA mutations? Some DNA mutations might lead to um, uncontrolled cell division in what we call cancer, but then some cell or some DNA mutations can lead to disease. And the three diseases that we specifically talk about in this class are sickle cell anemia, Tay-Sachs disease, and cystic fibrosis. Students will actually um, play detective as they analyze the DNA the DNA sequence between normal genes and the genes found in people with these diseases, and they will actually locate the DNA mutation that causes these diseases. And that really brings um, brings it home what why DNA is so important and how DNA mutations can lead to disease. And then here I'm showing you a picture of um, a student. Um, the students work. I have students extract DNA. They have two options. They can extract it from strawberries, which is really easy. They can also extract their own DNA from their cheek cells. It's painless and it's easy and it's really, really cool. Okay, so from DNA, as you might expect, we move on to genetics. Students learn all about dominant and recessive alleles. They learn about Punnett squares. Students love Punnett squares. I love Punnett squares. We learn about Mendelian inheritance as well as non-Mendelian inheritance. Students learn um, about codominance, sex-linked traits, and incomplete dominance. They learn how to read and create pedigrees. We, can, we have a lot of fun. They learn about blood types. They have the opportunity, if they wish to, to... Um, to test their own blood type from home. Um, lots of fun in this unit. And then after Christmas, we move on to the kingdoms of life. First, we learn about taxonomy and how living things are classified, how they are named. Students learn how to read and how to create a dichotomous key. Then we go through the kingdoms of life. So we want to teach the kids how all of the living organisms on our planet are grouped into the different kingdoms. I include here viruses. Viruses are not technically living things, but we do spend a whole week talking about viruses um, and the different in uh, the, the different diseases caused by viruses, how viruses hijack our cells. It's really a, a fun week. Then we talk about bacteria, we talk about fungi, we talk about protozoa and algae, and we talk about plants. Here I'm showing you some different um, activities that we will do to help students understand more about those different kingdoms. Um, when we're learning about plants, we talk about vascular and non-vascular plants. They've got lots of opportunities for some hands-on science. They, they dissect a flower. They go on a fungi scavenger hunt around their homes. Um, they have the option, if they choose to, to, um, to make petri dishes and then investigate what the dirtiest spot in their house is. I had some students take advantage of that opportunity last year. And then when we talk about animals, um, we talk about the characteristics all animals share, and then we break it up into learning about invertebrates and vertebrates. We do 
do a dissection. We have one dissection day and it comes in March, I believe, um, at the conclusion of our animal study. Students are not required to dissect. If they want to dissect, they can. So during that live class, I will be dissecting things using my document camera so they can watch me dissect. If they choose to dissect, they can dissect alongside me at home. So this was one of my students who happened to be one of my honor students last year. Um, he, he wanted to do all of the things. So anything that I ever um, offered as a, an activity or a project, he was all over it. He loved it. So he dissected alongside me at home. Other students just chose to watch me, but all students, no matter whether or not they dissected the actual animal specimen with me, they were required to make these, um, these 3D models using cardstock. So I provide the materials other than the cardstock. They have to to provide the cardstock, card but I provide the templates. And so the student prints those out on cardstock and follows the direction and actually creates these 3D models that help them understand how all of the different organs fit together in the specimens that we will be dissecting um, live during class. So, um, so that really makes, makes it um, make a lot more sense. And then our last unit of the year is ecology. We talk about autotrophs and heterotrophs. We talk about food chains and food webs. We learn about the different trophic levels. We learn about symbiosis and populations and ecosystems. And then we learn about biomes and the different cycles like the water cycle, the carbon cycle, the oxygen cycle. Um, we, you know, once again, I give students lots of opportunities to show me what they're learning um, in ways that are not just worksheets. I have them make their own food web. So this was one of my students' work. Um, once again, totally fine with them being creative and using plankton from SpongeBob in their food web. Totally fine with it. They also do an invasive species report, among other things. And then the very last thing that we do as a class in our very last class of the year, I have created a digital escape room. So we meet for our live class. I let students break up into different breakout rooms. They can choose who they want to do this with. And then they have to make their way out of this digital escape room. And they do it by utilizing all of the things that they've learned through the, through the year. So they might have to do a Punnett square to solve the to, to, to solve and and get the clue to unlock that digital escape room lock or they might have to read a food chain or they might have to do a vocabulary search something like that but it's a lot of fun and um, anyway that's how we wrap up the year so that is it in a nutshell that probably took longer than I meant it to but I'm really excited about this class we have a lot of fun um, I really hope that I help students, learn to love biology, learn to recognize the science in their everyday life and um, set them up for future success in remaining high school science courses or if they plan to go on into college. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. I'd be happy to answer them. <laughs>